I want to update you now on some breaking news out of Sudan, where we have learned a second American has been killed. There are very few details at this point being released. We do know it comes after the reported death of another Sudanese American physician that was earlier this week. That man was stabbed to death outside of his home. Evacuations of civilians from all over the world still taking place there, including of Americans, which the White House says it is helping to facilitate. I want to bring in Harding Bush now. He's a former Navy SEAL, 20 years experience, and also a senior manager for security operations at Global Rescue, actively helping to get people out of Sudan right now. Uh, thank you so much, Harding, for being with us at this point. Um, it's very concerning for any Americans who have been left behind, and that's how their families here in the United States feel. Do you know anything about this latest American killed? Any details you're hearing? No, I, I don't know anything about the latest American killed at, at all. Um, you know, it's a very uh, volatile situation. Uh, continue to shelter in place. Uh, those are, you know, the, the guidance, uh, specific directions on these government uh, evacuations. You know, it's government planes that are coming in. Uh, and then, you know, take all direction from them. Talk about the logistics of these rescues that involve your team at Global Rescue and how you're coordinating, if at all, with the White House and federal authorities. Well, we, we got very lucky. We, we had some members that are Global Rescue members, and what we do is we get people out of, uh, you know, situations when they're overseas, they become sick, medical evacuations and security evacuations. Uh, these folks were at sea in the Red Sea, uh, north of Port Sudan. They contacted us on Saturday the 15th when the, uh, you know, the, the extreme fighting broke out. It was already a, a very, you know, volatile situation, and they actually uh, do not travel uh, rated country by the State Department. You know, they asked what they they said that their intentions was to stay at sea and to continue their their vacation. We told them they had to leave, as you know, there wasn't a lot of fighting in Port Sudan, but it could certainly expand there. And you know, they were lucky; they were already at sea. We we're able to get them back down to uh, Port Sudan and get transferred into a larger vessel that one of our partners had and make their way a three day trip up to uh, up to Egypt. Via, oh. via the Red Sea. Yeah, no, it's a scary situation. And as I've said a number of times over the last few days, it has unraveled into more violence um, hour by hour. What are some of the options for transport and evacuation for those who are still stuck in some of these communities by land, by water, by air? Well, the, the overland routes from, you know, Port Sudan is probably the safest way to get out if you, if you happen to be in Port Sudan. That's on the uh, the Red Sea coast. If you're in Khartoum, there have been people that have made that overland trip to Port Sudan or even up to Egypt, but there have also been others that have been stopped at road at, at road checkpoints by the, the you know the, the two factions and have been robbed and their vehicles taken and they actually end up in a worse situation than than when they started. So um, is it you know, safer, pardon me, Harding, is it safer for people who have been told to shelter in place to do so until there is a more safe route? Yes, absolutely. You know, they, they either, if they're in Khartoum, they should, you know, shelter in place until they have, you know, word that is, you know, time for them to go to wherever the aircraft is going to come. I know the British evacuated out of a uh, military airbase, not the actual Khartoum. They should listen to that and they should go only when it's safe and when they're directed by their governments. This this ceasefire is for, you know, governments to get in and get people out. You know, commercial airlines, they, there may be some going, but they've got military tail numbers, perhaps. They're, you know, contracted by the government. They're actually, you know, government-affiliated flights. You know, as we saw in Afghanistan, there's going to be no commercial flights. You know, the commercial, regularly scheduled commercial is not going to return until the situation stabilizes. Harding, I just have 30 seconds left. Who are the Americans who are still there? Estimated 16,000. Is it business? Is it leisure? Is it family reasons? Um, you know, in, in Khartoum, a, a lot of it is, you know, dual nationals that are that are visiting families uh, that are over there. They, you know, we're during the Eid uh, holiday period and, and Ramadan, they may have gone over there to visit family. That is usually, you know, a large majority of the Americans that are there. There's also, you know, uh, uh, selected businesses and, you know, the energy uh, uh, industry also. So uh, there, there's um, humanitarian workers, NGOs, and that's one of the also, you know, the problems is the humanitarian workers can't deliver humanitarian aid. They're right. immobilized by the conflict. 
where a country where 15 million people depend on humanitarian aid. So. Yeah, no, you've got the aid element, and then you've got trying to rescue and the risk involved in getting all of these people out. A former Navy SEAL and also uh, someone who works with the global rescue teams trying to help with these evacuations. Harding Bush, thank you. Uh, my best thank to you, you and your teams, uh, and we'll be checking back in with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.